In today's world, wood protection seems like a problem solved by a trip to the hardware store. From cans of synthetic sealant to chemical coatings, modern carpenters rely on laboratory-engineered solutions to prolong the life of timber. Yet, for centuries, master craftsmen built structures that have outlasted generations without a single drop of modern sealant. Medieval carpenters, particularly in Europe, developed techniques that allowed their timber to resist rot, insects and moisture for decades. Ships survived treacherous seas, bridges endured floods, and homes stood through centuries of weather, all without relying on synthetic products. Their secret wasn't hidden magic. It was an understanding of wood, fire, and natural oils that modern sealants often fail to replicate. What's remarkable is how these techniques remain effective today. The principles medieval carpenters employed combine chemistry, physics, and practical observation. They understood that wood is alive and responsive to its environment, and by manipulating its surface and structure, they could extend its lifespan far beyond untreated timber. The methods may sound simple, but the results are extraordinary, giving modern woodworkers a tool that is both historically authentic and exceptionally effective. The medieval secret was charring, drying and oiling wood. Medieval carpenters used a three-step approach to preserve wood-controlled charring, slow-drying, and the application of natural oils. Charring might seem counterintuitive. After all, fire destroys wood. But a carefully applied flame transforms the surface. It burns away sugars and other organic compounds that attract fungi and insects, creating a protective carbon layer that resists decay. Unlike modern sealants, which sit on the surface and, you know, can peel or crack over time, the charred layer actually integrates with the wood itself. This forms a barrier that withstands mechanical wear and weathering far more effectively. Drying was equally critical. Freshly cut timber is full of moisture and, well, highly susceptible to rot. Medieval carpenters would air-dry beams and planks for months, sometimes even years, ensuring that the internal water content stabilised. Modern coatings simply cannot compensate for wet wood, and honestly, no amount of synthetic sealant can prevent internal decay caused by residual moisture. Finally, the application of oils, such as linseed, walnut, or even pine resin, infuse the wood with a hydrophobic layer, repelling water while keeping the timber flexible. This step prevented cracking and splitting and reinforced the charred layer's protective properties. When combined, these steps created timber that could survive centuries. Evidence of these techniques appears across Europe. Medieval churches, bridges and timber-framed houses reveal beams that remain solid despite centuries of exposure. In some Scandinavian shipyards, Viking and later medieval hulls show charred planks treated with oils, surviving salt water and storms for decades. Ah, bridges constructed in Germany during the 1400s, they truly are a marvel. These structures exhibit beams with the same triple-layer treatment we've been discussing. Remarkably, many of these bridges required only minor maintenance over the course of hundreds of years. Quite impressive, isn't it? And even today, 
You know, traditional Scandinavian boat builders are replicating these age-old methods. They apply controlled charring and oils to new planks, creating vessels that are far more resilient than those made with chemically coated timber. It's fascinating how some techniques just stand the test of time, isn't it? The historical proof is, well, quite clear. This is a method grounded in observation and practical experience rather than convenience or marketing hype. It's a testament to the ingenuity and resourcefulness of our ancestors, really. All right, to apply this technique, start by selecting straight-grained, high-quality wood. Hardwoods, such as oak, ash or elm, are ideal choices. However, you know, softwoods can also benefit from careful treatment. Allow the wood to dry completely, and ideally this should be done in a well-ventilated covered area. It's really important to ensure proper drying. Once the wood is dry, you'll want to expose the surface to controlled heat. A propane torch or even an open flame works for small projects. For larger beams, they can be charred over a controlled fire. The goal here is to blacken the surface, but of course without turning it to ash. After charring, it's important to allow the timber to cool completely and then apply a natural oil. Linseed oil is widely accessible and historically accurate. However, mixtures including pine resin or walnut oil work effectively as well. Now it's time to rub the oil thoroughly into the surface. This should be repeated over several days for deep penetration. For beams that are set into the ground or exposed to high moisture, the charred and oiled layer should cover all exposed areas. The results are quite remarkable. The wood resists water, insects and rot far better than untreated timber or many modern sealants. So this method is ideal for outdoor furniture, garden structures, tool handles, or even, you know, full-scale construction. Raised garden beds treated this way, well, they last far longer than conventional lumber. And tool handles, they maintain strength and really resist cracking under heavy use. Bushcrafters, survivalists and historical reenactors can, with confidence, apply this technique to shelters, bridges or watercraft, knowing that the wood will endure. Even small-scale projects benefit, you know. Charring the ends of posts or the edges of planks provides, well, disproportionate protection, reinforcing the structure right where decay usually begins. The beauty of this approach lies in its sustainability. It uses natural, accessible materials, is honestly environmentally friendly, and replicates centuries-old craftsmanship. By combining char, drying and oils, modern woodworkers gain a method proven over centuries, without relying on industrial chemicals that degrade over time. If you found this guide valuable and want more insight into historical craftsmanship, practical survival techniques and time-tested methods for building durable structures, subscribe to Echoes of Valor. Share this video with fellow history enthusiasts, woodworkers and survivalists who want to preserve wood the way medieval carpenters did. By applying these techniques, we honour the skill of our ancestors while creating structures that stand the test of time, just as they always have.